peace to everyone. So today, May 25th, 2021, the, uh, on the uh, Galactic Talk, your host, Daniel H.E.L. And today we have for the second time, you know what I'm saying, a, one of the, you know what I'm saying, realist pioneer, you know what I mean, within the uh, indigenous, Thank you. you know what I'm saying, Moorish community. So without further ado, you already came on the uh, on the uh, Galactic Talk, so where people knew about you know where our server was coming from, is artistic, you know what I'm Thank saying, you, bro. degree. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. And the link that he had as well, you know what I'm saying, back back into the uh, concierge, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, with the New York territory, and mm -hmm. a Sir drop as well, some you know major intel on occult history. So without further ado, we have. Asir, the Duke of Tears. So welcome, bro. Thank you. Peace all the human families of the planet Earth. Thanks for having me in. I really appreciate it, man. All right. So uh, for the second interview, actually, and session, I did ask Asir to, you know what I'm saying, talk and give that occult history on Spain, but actually Spain being in America. And, mm -hmm. you know, after this, we'll probably, you know, go over French more, but most notably, I did request Asir to, you know what I'm saying, to share with us a metaphysical experience that he had. So we'll go, you know, within these three main topics, and if time allow, probably, you know, other questions here and there. So, bro, you know what I'm saying, just to eat up the other uh, session, would you please have the honor of sharing one of your metaphysical, you know what I'm saying, experience to the people. Mm. Definitely, man. Um, just let me know where you want to start. No, it's all yours, bro, man. Um, uh, as far as Spain being uh, America, that is evidence in a lot of different historical documents. But for the most part, what we should understand is that Spain is a English word, is an English word. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So ask yourself why would somebody who's from Spain allow themselves to be identified with an English name? Think about that. But we never do because we're not from the perspective of historical accuracy. We're more dealing with like what we're told about history and then trying to jury jurymander ourselves within that uh, square peg. Yeah, it's like we're a round hole going into a square peg. So we just be making stuff up sometimes. But when I say we, I'm talking about those of us that be trying to put historical context of stuff together, but then are forced to always take in the, the oppressor's narrative of what these places or who these people were. So if you're talking to me about Christopher Columbus, that's different than Cristobal Colon. You see what I'm saying? Right Cristobal Colon was somebody totally different than the person, the historical pers personage of Christopher Columbus. And the fact that um, at the time that we're speaking, Spain, like I said, did not exist. So we're not talking about, it wasn't like the Moors was just fighting Spain. We were going against the consolidated base of those Roman tribes that reestablished themselves as quote unquote kingdoms. And we're now trying to use Christianity as the rallying cry to force and push the so long out of this continuous continuation rome was always against and fighting against moors because the moors existed prior to the foundation of rome and so rome or roamium because there's no such thing as rome rome actually comes from another word called roma romawium or roamium which means kingdom or smaller kingdom. So when we're speaking of the Europeans at that time, we also got to understand that there was no Europe at this time. There still is no Europe. Europe don't exist. Europe is as real as the Middle East is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Europe is really Western Asia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So those people who are calling themselves Europe, European are those who are basically claiming descent or claiming allegiance to the queen, the Moorish, i.e. melanated queen that allowed them to establish something up there in her name. Her name was Europa. Okay? And Europa was one of the daughters of Dido. Dido was the goddess that established Carthage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when we speaking of the people we were fighting in 1492, there was no Spain in no 1492, so it couldn't have been them. What we was dealing with was fighting. We was the, let's say, will the Almoravid, right, dynasty. The Almoravid dynasty itself is now fighting. We're not even at war with them because they're smaller than us. You can only go to war with somebody that's that's equal to you or that's, that's at a level of somewhat equality. Anything when you're dealing with somebody that's lesser than you and fighting, that's called a skirmish or a scrimmage, like in football. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now skirmish. It's not like we're taking this shit serious. So we ain't even take it that serious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you had the Roamium of Galicia. That's now Portugal. Now in Galicia, language was like art. So the same way we would be into like painters and stuff like that is the same way they was with language. So they would, so the people in, in Galicia was really about trying to create their own form of artistic expression that would give them a, a specific identity that was be specifically outside the greater Moorish dialectic, mm -hmm. right? that Galician dialect went on to become what we call Portuguese or Portuguese, right? Yeah. So that's one of them, the Romium of, of, of Galicia. Then it was the Romium of Aragon we was against, the uh, Romium of Navarre, the Romium of Navarre, Aragon, Castile, Galicia, and there's one more that I forget. So these are all individual kingdoms that really didn't exist and would not have existed if not for the Moors allowing a section of them to buy back their noble titles. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason why they were able to establish somewhat identity. So at the time, Espana, that's the other one, Espana. Espana and all of these kingdoms were were all derivative of the only Christian kingdom that we allowed to exist in so-called Western Asia, i.e. Europa, after a certain time. That kingdom was called um, Astara or Astaria. And they had a king that fought and we Moors, we respect valor. So we respected that the Astarian was actually able to put up and we let them keep their little kingdom. It was one little kingdom left. And we let them keep that. Yeah. And so those Astarians basically were stuck there, but they maintained their thing. And unlike us, once we went and reconsolidated how the empire was going to go, then we start trying to now take each other's pieces of our empire. And that allowed the Astarians, who are the, i.e. the Romans, i.e. the Christians, to slowly expand territory. And then certain Moors would fall victim to these guys and then would then pay them as mercenaries to fight against other Moors who were Muslim. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we didn't care what you was. We didn't care if you was Christian, Muslim, whatever, whatever. It was more about the national expansion of the empire or the, or the expansion then of the Christian territories. Right so essentially that's kind of like what happened with that. And so once the Galatians was able to establish their language base and they bought the kingdom from 
the guy from El Zagar, who was Boabdil, the last so-called ruler of Morocco's, um, of the kingdom's um, uncle. Mm -hmm. He sold the kingdom to Isabel and Ferdinand, who Isabel was running Aragon, and Ferdinand, I believe, was cut from Castile. And then from there, the Castilians started to create their own version of their language. You see what I'm saying? Which we call Castilian Spanish. But the interesting thing is prior to 1492, the language of the Spanish court is what we would call French. And the language of the French court back then was what we would call Spanish. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it flipped. So through the union, through the marriages, this is when the languages start to flip. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And why the Franconians, which come from the word Ferengi, like in Star Trek, the Ferengis was the um was like the Jews. They was like the traitors that would basically into all of the deal making and the bargain making and stuff. In real life, the Ferengi is the origin group of the people we would today call the Franconians, who we then we would call the Franks, who then we would call the French. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, indeed. So these guys decide they're going to get down and they adopt the language and now each kingdom is having its own version. So by the time the Moors start going into their issues, so essentially they, they bust it all down and um, they were able to take control because the funding that they didn't have came from another source and that was coming from the Venetian oligarchy, which at this time are melanated men and women, but they are basically Romans. They're still keeping up with that. But Rome is now under the guise of Christian. You see what I'm saying? So when you think Roman, think Christian. And therefore, it's pagan. You see? Whereas Islam at this time is running the entire world. You mm -hmm. understand? So in that little place, West Asia, they had to create a whole identity for themselves. This is where Europa comes from. And why they had to start to label themselves as European, you see? Yeah. Because technically they was all under the jurisdiction of Genghis or whatever Moors from Tartary on that side, and then all of the Moors from Barbary on this side. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So long story short, they were able to consolidate their base through Astaria. Astaria broke up into the little Christian kingdoms, which was basically new Roman kingdoms. And then from there, they then consolidated that all into a trust. That trust came to be known as the Sestui Trust by 1666. But prior to that, it was invested in a papal bull called the Dumb Diversus in 1451. Yeah, so bro, allow please, allow please to repeat that portion because uh, a lot of people know about the Sestui Trust, but probably not the, you know what I'm saying, all the uh, affiliation or, you know what I'm saying? Right. So please go, please repeat that portion again, bro. The Sestui Trust was established in 1666 by the Vatican. That's the trust that said that anybody that is beyond themselves, that is lost to the sea, beyond the sea for seven years, beyond the sea for seven years means that their assets could be seized by the state and given as dowry to the Pope and managed by any of the Pope's agencies. Mm -hmm. So this is where state municipalities and all of this come into play. This is when they start coming up into being and they start referring to them as counties. You see? Right. Because the counties were under the jurisdiction of the count. The count was either the son or the, the next in line to the viz count. And the viz count and the count was usually the cousin to the king. And the accumulated wealth of these counts territory was then broken up into little territories called counties. That's right. You understand? That's right. And so anybody lost beyond themselves for seven years, you see what I'm saying, would then become property of the count or the county, which then mean they would go beyond the thing. Mm -hmm. So that's how they did it. 
So the sets that we trust of 1666 was the culmination of an earlier document called the Dumb Diverses of 1451, which was the actual declaration of war between by the fake newly reorganized Roman states against the rest of the world that was Moorishly dominated. Mm -hmm. And then by about 17 something, they then merged the Sesta We Trust with the Pesor Trust. And then they established a business called the Virginia Tobacco Company. That Virginia Tobacco Company, which again is part of the Pesor Trust, that was annexed to the Sesta We Trust then had to get reconsolidated when the Moors indigenous wise was a having being a part of that on the subject side. Yeah. So they reconsolidated that whole base to separate who would be under the trust and who would be managed by the trust. The place where this would be worked on would be called the Virginia Tobacco Company, right? But mm -hmm. now they reconsolidated it the Sestui Trust, the Pesor Trust, the Virginia Tobacco Company, we all reconsolidate re now into a major county that can take control of all of the other counties that are paying tribute into this trust based upon them being taken seven years beyond themselves and not being in their proper person. That county became known as the District of Columbia. That District of Columbia County then gets rolled over again. So that way between 1812 and 1871, they reconsolidate all of that again now by putting the Pesor Trust, the Sestui Trust, the Virginia Tobacco Company, the District of Columbia, right? Now all of this is redistributed as the United States government, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then between that period and 1933, they go through another receivership. Because remember, none of this is real. Mm -hmm. All of this is based on somebody foreign coming in saying this is how it should happen. Mm -hmm. But they've consolidated enough subjects that they could turn into commoners, you see, and then put them under what they call common law, which is a British form of law that comes from the House of Commons. But above the House of Commons is what? The House of Lords, you see? Right. So you still are dealing in a foreign system that has nothing to do with the original one that your people set up for you to deal with. Mm -hmm. Because these guys convinced you to go into their fake trust become your beneficiary and now they're killing you before you can go back to being the true beneficiary and they got to go back to being a trustee mm -hmm. so they go through the reorganization again and then reorganize this whole thing again by 1933 and then bundle it up by 1938 into a new business called the charleston cincinnati chicago railroad company if you anybody talking about that recently or this side of it recently, it's coming from me. We consolidated everything else back into another business called the Charleston Cincinnati Chicago Railroad Company. That is the real name of the United States because that is what consisted of the original Pesor Trust established way back before there was a Virginia company. Then it got consolidated in the Pesor Trust established the business called the Virginia Tobacco Company, which was the United States version of the British East India Company. Yeah. Right. Then they consolidated that, reconsolidated that again under a new county called the District of Columbia. Then they created a government for that county and then basically tried to establish zip codes to get people to establish counties under it that would not be under its direct jurisdiction if they did not accept that. Mm -hmm. So once they accepted that, they all ceased being Americans and all became U.S. citizens, i.e. property, beneficiary, lead subjects, chattel, 14th Amendment citizens, all to this foreign trust.
Indeed. That they reconsolidated again under a railroad company. They had to get out of more science of America temple, I believe, uh, the one in Ohio, the one that this morning, Child, Child's Bay, that was purchased by Rockefeller in them. And then right after that, he used that as land pack to then go establish his jurisdiction for the railroad. But remember, all of these people that we've seen as the Rockefellers, the Carnegies, the Mellons, the this, the that, one, they all black. Two, there's a black side of the family, the white side of the family. They're only showing you the white side because that's the side they want you to believe is in control. And they do the bidding for these niggas, mm -hmm. i.e. savage, hairy white men to come in and destroy our community so that way they could come in and take them over. Mm -hmm. They've been doing that, using white people as proxy decoys. So while you focusing on this white man that's out here killing you, he's being funded by the black man that look like and you know what, bro? Uh, my cousin, you know, saying back when we were, you know, near Montreal in Quebec territory, right? Mm -hmm. When he was doing business with a gentleman, you know, I'm saying pale, pale uh, light skin. That guy told him, but he didn't understand it back then. He told me, you know what? In Montreal, the more you rise up the ranks, the more the people on top looks like you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because they're the ones, the black, the black nobility. This is what they call the Astors, the Carnegies, the Mellons, the Red Shields, who we call the Rothschilds, the Sasson, the Baudillon, the names that you don't really hear about, mm -hmm. the uh, Messiaen de Rouge, like these type of people. All of these is Moors. All of these is black people from Europe who, for whatever reason, wanted their version of law to become the dominant version here so that way they could always be in control. But the problem is we Moors, we're the ones that allowed them to come and do this in the first place because George was paying money to us for protection against the rest of these niggas. So when Marie Antoinette and Louis had their heads cut off, their son was spirited out and brought to his uncle who was the King of England. And the King of England then sent him under the protection of a Moor named Bayshore. And that Bayshore Moor changed his name to Paysor. Mm -hmm. Paysor is a name that means paymaster in the old English. So he sent them to the land that George and them had owned over here or was leasing over here from the original nations that was here, like the Tesalagi or the Lenabe or the Sagamores, or who they call the Delaware, the Nanticoke, the Narragansett. These are all Moors. These are all Black people. These are all Muslims. Yeah, yeah. Because the word Muslim is an Indian word, is an Algonquin word. And the Algonquins existed way before they talk about the, the, the fake Mohammed that came 200 years after the real Mohammed. Peace be upon him. Yeah. So these pesos, we as Moors are connected to that trust because in 1751, the same king said any Moors that dwelt in his kingdom could be, could be translators, brokers, um, um, anything that they wanted. They would not be taxed. They would not be levied. They would not be none of that because the king was always in league because the King George of England was the Sultan of the European, of the Sultan. According to the Sultan, George was the Sultan of Rome. I got a quote from him when he was trying to send George doctor. This is the, this was the George that was married to Charlotte when they was trying to poison him. He sent his doctors to him, and when he gave him the salutation, he referred to him as the Sultan of Rome and Palestine. He's the King of England. You understand? Yeah. So this then means then that the English Empire was a part of the Moorish Empire, which explains why so many Moors was people in the, the British Empire at the time. This explains why we all got English names now. Mm-hmm. Think about that. When you read the Sundry Free Moors Act of 17, whatever that was, 
And you read the Moors that speak it in that, that they got to be under the Sharif in law because they not Negro, Black, colored. Now, one of them niggas got an Islamic name. <laughs> but they all pledge allegiance and fealty to the Sultan. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because under the Sharif in law, we all Sultans. We all nobles. We all from the original blood. You dig what I'm saying? Whereas in Europe, Europa, Western Asia, you could only be one king. You could only be one earl. You could only be one nest. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was it was because of niggas like Prince Hall, the self-hating born European, first generation born American with European parents that wanted to go back into the European nobility. But they could not do it. Because they were forbidden because they're lead subjects of the king. You see? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Subjects to the king. We were subjects of the king. You see what I'm saying? Which yeah. means that we didn't have to. We really were the subjects at all. <laughs> I guess. So yeah. these guys, Prince Hall and them, couldn't get no charter from England to set up their lodge or whatever they wanted to do because they technically was peons. You see? Mm -hmm. So they went to the other people on their status level to get a charter and they couldn't do it. So what does the story say? The story says they went to the G7 lodge in, in England to get the charter to establish the African lodge for, for African lodge 459, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they say. But think about it. There was no England in the 1700s. <laughs> Over there. Yep. That place was called Albion. So what England they talking about? Talking about New England, Boston, and all of that. Which is like you mentioned earlier and uh, earlier as well, Brutium. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so they went to these people. They got their little joint. Mm -hmm. They got their joint. And... He told them, no, I can't give you no charter because y'all niggas is not nobles. You under the king. So then they said, well, what else could we do? So instead, he went to the Irish, who were also melanated at this time. There's no white Irishmen. These are all melanated people. But the Irish, which means that they under the jurisdiction of Britain, you see, and George. Yeah. And they're fighting alongside of him reluctantly just so that way they can keep what little fights them in their county and their kingdom from being overly taxed. So Prince Hall and them go to these niggas mm -hmm. and say, look, we need a charter to do such and such and such. Then the Irish dudes is like, yeah, but we're a part of the military. You see? Mm -hmm. So you would be receiving your charter and all of that, but technically it would be a military commendation. It would be a, so, a pseudo military charter. You understand? Yeah. And this, these sycophant niggas was like, well, great. That's what we want. And then that's how they got consecrated. So they got consecrated through an Irish military wing, which then means then that the Prince Hall thing was a military extension of the auxiliary Irish Freemasonry troop that was only that to keep Ireland as free as possible. I got you, bro. And it was founded by niggas that wanted to be foreign anyway and thought that way of law and life was better than the original people that was already here that George and them was paying tribute to to maintain the hundreds, which is the colonies. Okay, and then finally, this dude, Prince Hall and them set it up and then they decide that they're going to work with the British government to detract and get weight and get rid of the Societist Republic of Monacano Sestados, the original government that was already here that we call the original American states. And so they fostered that whole Boston Tea Party bullshit in response to the Stamp Act. So they told people that they was up there throwing the tea off the thing to protest the tax. But to get on the boat, the white boys had to put on blackface to look like the people who owned the boats, they was throwing the tea off. Mm -hmm. Why would these people be dressing up like Indians if the boat that they getting on is allegedly owned by, by uh, 
uh, Europeans. Because the Indians was the ones that was holding the that was controlling it. Because the Indian just mean Indios, mm-hmm. or i.e. those Moors that were connected to the British East India Company. And so they go on the ship while they're throwing the tea off. That's the diversion. What they really trying to do is go into the bowels of the ship to get the charter, the original military charter that they were sending back to George to stop them from having it to steal the charter. And this is how the white boys got recognized by Prince Hall mm-hmm. because they both was at the bottom. So they said, let's work together and you guys do the ritual, dress up like my people, get on the boat and get it. And then once you do that, we'll validate your lodge. I got you. Man. This was really going on. Yeah. So these niggas, these Prince Hall niggas that eventually grew on to, these Prince Hall niggas eventually joined up with the Royal Ethiopian Regiment to fight against the Americans. Us. Mm-hmm. These same Boule dudes, these same Prince Hall dudes, eventually established the first AME Zionist churches, which are all Freemasonic churches. They're run by Freemasons, mm-hmm. which means they're devil worshippers. And through these AME Zionist churches, they created a law that said that any blacks that was making money could only make their money and hold their money through the church. This is when they started making up laws to restrict niggas to make it where the only way you could be free technically was going into this foreign system. And Prince Hall of these niggas was the ones that's fostering that. And then from Prince Hall, he was the them. only resurrected original people. And he was working to spend money to bring you over here. Who paid for the abolitionists? To bring white people over and get them to disinherit the original Moors, original natives from their lands, and then put the white people on there to rent the land from them. And then they could hold it all in trust and pay their little portion back to the king. You understand? These niggas been all day trying to get us to get away from our original customs to follow these Europeans. Mm-hmm. And so from the Prince Hall, we get the AME Zionist church, we get the whole Christian black movement shit. They start turning their backs on anybody that's not Christian, same ones that set up the HSBCU. Right? So it goes from the Prince Hall to the AME Zion church shit, to the low key Freemason shit. Now we're establishing Greek fraternities, you see? Why would you establish a Greek fraternity when there was no Greece? Greece didn't exist. Greece come from the word Grekos, and the Grekos were the slow, dim-witted people that couldn't accept the real knowledge of the cosmos, so we gave it to them in mythological, allegorical story forms. Mm-hmm. And this is the basis that these niggas created a whole society off of. You understand? Mm-hmm. So to us, it was Peloponnesia. To us, it was the Minoans. To us, it was the Etruscans. To us, it was the Macedonians, the Corinthians, the Dorians, the whoever, the Mycenaeans, right? Mm -hmm. No, to these niggas, we lump all of that to me in Greek. See? Fake. Indeed. So these same Greek, Black, fake, Prince Hall, AME, Zion, Christian, Freemason, America-hating, Native-hating, Moorish-hating people, Blacks, right? start to now take over the lands of the original blacks that was already here with the help of these white slave interlopers. And while this is happening, creating the whole narrative that these white people is really in control and these black people is being brought over here to work for them. When it's the opposite. That's why in Django, Stephen was signing the checks and the name he signed was Carl Candy. So really, Stephen was Carl Candy, and Carl Candy was Stephen. You did mention something in the first session, yeah, actually. You see what I'm saying? Go back and look at the movie. When he back in the thing and he signing the checks, he's signing Carl Candy name. That's because yeah. that's Stephen's real name. The slave was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. The master playing the slave was Sam Jackson. So I'm just going to share this uh, picture here. So, bro, that's an hospital. That's a building, an hospital, you know what I'm saying, in Montreal. Uh, I can't see it. Oh, no, it's okay, bro. I'm just showing it to the people to make a link with what you've been. Okay. So 
Here they're saying, you know, that's an hospital that was built in the 1800s, but actually now with, especially for the people in New York, uh, Quebec territory, or even, you know, Canada, <laughs> this is only to show you that that building here, the history was hijacked because that's a castle, you know what I'm saying? That later on, yes. when they hijacked the building and they put the narrative, mm -hmm. then they put it as an hospital. But that actually was, you know, by Morse, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we have several buildings like this, you know what I'm saying? I know you, you talk about it, uh, Asir, you know, the castle in New mm -hmm. York, in New York. So mm -hmm. we have the same thing here, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's Quebec, Montreal. So, hey, bro, without being said, uh, since we have, you know, half an hour of conversating before the q and I did find mm -hmm. uh, the picture from one of your class uh, to mm -hmm. stay with a fair zone, you know what I'm saying? So that's oh, song, right? Yeah, so that was from your yeah. your class, Silingium Confederati Americano. Yeah. Bro, you mentioned yes. the other time, uh, the Washita and the Asian and the French more. So could you drop your intel on it again, bro? Can you hear me? Yeah. The whole French Revolution was started by a more named Bookman. And Bookman was a Muslim. He used to read the Quran. And the story says that when the French and them tried to stop him from getting it, whatever, they threw him in the fire with the pages. And he grabbed the pages and held them onto his body to the point. Because back then, he was printing it. So the pages was like made of like, like, you know, like when you do the printer press, how you got to create the, the stencil, the stencil's yeah. metal, yeah. and then you put the press over it and do it, whatever. So they threw the metal presses in the fire. He ran in the fire and pulled the metal presses up to his body. And what happened was they burned into his body the words of the Quran and all of that into his body. Mm -hmm. And he was using that to teach people how to read See, the reason why Haiti cursed is because they, they killed Desanye. But the legend says that, they, that they, killed the, they killed the great black pig. The black pig symbolically is Desanye. And then decided to go with Christophe, who always wanted to go back to French, being French. You see? Yeah. And so Bookman, because he was Muslim, he was teaching them all the Quran and fighting and all of that stuff, literally from off his thing, from off his thing. That's why they call him Bookman, Bookman, you see? And when you see pictures of Bookman, he got a fez on. There was another Moorish king that got caught up in the war over there. His name was Mackendall. Peace to him. Mm -hmm. And Mackendall was a Moorish prince who got caught up in that and fought against the this fake French and all of that. And he was a master at poisons. He created, he killed so many people with poison. French and people were like that with the poison that they named the poison after him. If I was to go to Haiti right now and ask them for a thing of Mackendall, they'll look at you a certain way because they figuring you're trying to get poison to kill somebody. Yeah. That's all because of Mackendall, bless the dead. Yeah, and bro, would you be, would you, would you tackle that uh, portion of, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, the Moors that were on Louisiana and on the island and the land right. washed those? This goes back to the Peso Trust thing. When the, when the son of Marie Antoinette and Louis, the lost Dufon, as they call him, Dufon is French for dolphin. So ask yourself this, what, when the last time you seen any dolphins in France? Mm -hmm. Have you ever? Mostly here. Have you, have, have you ever heard of any dolphins in France? Off the waters of France? Not, not to my knowledge. You know right, so why then would the French nobility refer to their king, their prince, as the Dauphin? if the animal that they're describing is not even indigenous to the place that they live at. The only dolphins I know are in the Caribbean, right? Mm -hmm. Florida, right? 
What's off the coast of Florida? Haiti, right? Cuba, Haiti. Haiti, Cuba, right, right, right. So it's the same thing with them. After Pesor and them, excuse me, Bayshore and them came, they then went back to um, the land, Virginia and all that. But because he was a Pesor, Bayshore, they were still more connected to the old empire. You know, old Paris and old France and all that stuff is in the place of today we call St. Louis, right? Mm -hmm. St. Louis is old Paris. Old France is Louisiana. Why? Because the boy wound up being named Louis after his father. And then through the political subdivision, he was able to travel out to the mid, to the, what we would call Louisiana, that area, and he met with the Washita Emperor and Empress and all of them there. And they decided to have a political union, a political marriage. And right. so Louis marries Queen Anna, and then they link it together as Louisiana, which is the unified state between the French nobility and the indigenous so-called Black uh, Moorish nobility through the so-called Washita. Because the Maison de Rouge is one of the people, one of the shareholders in the original Peso Trust, which became what? The business endeavor became the Virginia Tobacco Company. That's why everything that the French do, that's why every treaty with the United States start with the French first. Right? Hmm. Then the U.S. Or it'll start with the Spanish because like people don't understand, Louisiana was, was Moorish or Spanish first. Right. Then it became French. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then those that wasn't having it and was fighting against this whole thing, they got banished to Hades. Because remember, these niggas is following fake Greek mythology. So Hades, right, is Haiti or Haiti. Mm -hmm. And so the nationals, just like when China, with the Chinese revolution, when the fake Chinese came and took over, what happened to the real Chinese, the real dark national Chinese, what they do? They bounced and set up Taiwan. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's the same thing with this. That's why Haiti is, is one of the only countries that's not bankrupt. Because everybody owed them. Haiti went with the Moors of Haiti, it went and freed up all of the South American territories. And what did this? What did they do? They got rid of all of the dark-skinned people that they helped set up that, and it started ushering in all of these fake nationalities, all these fake people to believe that, that that's, look what they did with Argentina. All of the original dark-skinned men, all the original people in Argentina, all the original Argentinian dark-skinned people, what did they do? They murdered them, massacred them. They forced a fake war with Uruguay, Uruguay, and then sent all of the Moors on the front line so they could all get wiped out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then turn everybody light-skinned. That's why Argentinians be cool and shit, but don't think that we don't know that y'all niggas is black genociders. Don't think we, we forgot about that. Go look down and research on all of the ancient synagogues in Argentina, all built by the Moors, all built by Asiatics like us. Mm -hmm. That's right, bro, man. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Talking about, you know what I'm saying? The NBA talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the uh, Sp Spanish Armada, you know. Yeah, which was the Moorish Armada. And that was stopped by um, what's his name, Francis Drake in them, who was another Moor. And which happened here, you know what I'm saying? Yes, like, all like, here. Because yeah. the Spanish Armada was all the Moorish ships that the Castilian Spanish was able to seize, but didn't know how to use. Mm -hmm. Whereas all of the Moorish seamen who had those ships seized ran in and started working for the Brutish Crown. You see? Yeah. And that's what and what happened? The British Navy shut all of that down because all of the Moors that had got their stuff stolen were the master navigators, the master seamen, mm -hmm. the master, what they would call the masters and commanders. Mm -hmm. And they became the head admirals, the vice admirals, the generals in the British Army and all of that. 
Yeah. Because they could be British but still maintain their Moorish nationality. Right, right. And that made me think about something that you mentioned too, you know what I'm saying? The uh, indigenous people on the island, whether it's Haiti whatsoever, and the mm-hmm. Acadian when they went up north, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, to uh, La Cazzi or, you know, uh, the uh, the coast of so-called Canada, you know what I'm saying? Right. Let's talk about this. Like in Nova Scotia, in New Scotia, those is the Moors that went up there. They was the ones that fought during the War of 1812 with Napoleon and them. Mm-hmm. The War of 1812 was the same year that the New Madrid earthquake happened. Napoleon and Pete and the Tsar from Russia teamed up to destroy and take over what was left of Tartaria. And um, at the same time, you got the British coming in and burning down the original White House, Casablanca. Because Casablanca is how you say White House, right? Yeah. Right. And so this original White House, they all get shut down. Then when the Moors was on them, they chased them all the way up into, into what's called Nova Scotia. And while in exile up there, they invented hockey. Later on. <laughs> you know Look it up. Yeah. That's why these white boys act white folk ain't create nothing but confusion and lies. These niggas, they never create nothing. There's nothing that they can show me and nobody they can show me that was real. Because all of they, there's a difference between a bad tell and a bad toll. A bad tell, B-A-T-T-E-L, was a fight or a skirmish or a war that was said to have happened, but is used for political means mm-hmm. because it really didn't happen. And then you have a bad toll because they had the help of those of us that looked like us that was using them against us. Same shit happened today. With all of them people that was on the plantation, the tobacco plantation that the Virginia company owned in the North and all of that, all them niggas was white. All them niggas, when I say white, I mean W-I-G-H-T yeah, white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are W-H-I-T-E white. Yeah. Because we descend from a clan of Moors called the Alawite or the Alawite. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. got you, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, uh, we're gonna make a switch now. You know what I'm saying? So that's cool. the moment on occult history. So now, more about you know what I'm saying mystical and star map. So, bro, I'm gonna invite you to share to the public one of your metaphysical experience, bro. Um. I had one yesterday. So we got these cats, the Savannah cats. They really dope. Um, they like little lions, little leopards. Mm-hmm. But one of them, the girls seem a little smaller. So we were doing a lot to try to because they're kittens. Mm-hmm. So the boys thriving. But for some reason, the girl, she just, I don't know, she just couldn't handle it. She wasn't eating. She wasn't thing. She wasn't growing. So we did a lot of work with her, trying to work with her, help her, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So on the last night, the night of my class, actually, I think while I was teaching the class, I had her bundled up. But I ain't. So prior to that, though, I noticed that she would go and I have these UV lights for my plants. Yeah. So I put the UV lights on at night for the plants and shit. Maybe, you know, it was really good for them. But I noticed when she came, she just stayed in front of the UV light. She just staring off into it. Like she was almost projecting herself into it. Like she's seen the light, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know, also when babies, melanated babies are born, they put them under the UV lights to, to activate the melanin. So I'm looking at it like, wow, maybe she's trying to activate, you know what I'm saying? On the inside. So long story short, she wound up dying, right? Mm -hmm. The next day. So me and the queen, and um, she wakes up and she says, oh, Mardi, which is the boy cat, is on the whole other side of the room. Because, you know, she died. So then I said, well, where he at now? She was like, over there. 
for the whole day. So by the plants over here, I got a little statue of Sekhmet, right? Yeah. The goddess, the Egyptian goddess, the lion head, the cat goddess. Yeah. Why when I look over, the, the, the little boy cat is prostrated right in front of the Sekhmet cat. Almost as if it was praying for the cat that was gone. Like, wouldn't leave it for the whole day. You understand what I'm saying? Really? Mm. Yeah. So I'm doing the knowledge to it. Like, wow, why don't you come out, Monty? Why don't you come out, Monty? But I'm not really doing the knowledge to it until I realize, oh, he, of all of the statues to be around, he go to the one with Sekhmet, right? Because that's the cat god. You understand? Mm. And the female was the one that passed. Mm -hmm. so energetically it showed me that even animals have a sense of spirituality that we may not even understand another case in point dealing with the animals one day maybe a couple of years ago i was riding down a block on the way to the storage unit and i saw all of these crows on the on the phone line yeah and they wound like they loud you know what i'm saying yeah. So as I'm riding by, so you know, I feed the birds and all that stuff all the time out here. So as I'm walking by, I'm looking, I'm like, damn, what's what's up with them? What do they do? What's wrong with them? So then I look down, there's a dead crow like in the gutter. Mm -hmm. But there, it wasn't, there was no water in the gutter. It was just like on the side, you know? So, so I said, damn. And as I stop and I'm looking at them, they're getting louder. They're getting louder, louder, louder. So I'm like, I can't just leave this dude. You know, I can't just leave this dead bird in the street, man. I should mad disrespectful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially if it's a crow. A pigeon, maybe. But a crow, you can't go out like that. You got to look out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I went and got a bag. So when I came back, he's still there. So when I go down, about to pick him up, one of the crows swooped down as almost like to like stop me. Then another one, right? So now I'm thinking about the movie, The Birds. Remember the movie, right? Little, yeah, little. Right, so now I'm like, okay. They don't want me to rock with them, but I don't want to leave it, right? Yeah. So I said, well, just tell them what you're doing. Some said in my mind, some said, well, just tell them what you're doing. So I looked up and I told them, I said, look, I'm going to take them so that way the devils don't come and just throw them in the garbage or whatever. I'm going to take them, I'm going to bury them. You know what I'm saying? So don't feel like I'm trying to do whatever to them. The crow is stopped. <laughs> they all stop. Real talk. I go get the crow, put it in the bag, jump back on the bike, ride all the way back to the um to the beach, and then on the like another section, not on the beach, but this section was like a bunch, it's like more like dirt, not saying the shit. Mm -hmm. And I wind up burying him there. That's my word. When I got up, there was like three other crows like around, almost like they followed me, like watched me do this shit, right? Yeah. So I put him to the ground, say a little prayer for him. I look up, I see this deep road. I said, see, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. So, he, so he's good. You know what I mean? Sorry for your loss, whatever. Bounce. Mm -hmm. When I'm leaving, the three crows go down and stand right where I bury him. Like they, you know what I'm saying? Like they saying prayers over him or some shit. I can't make it up. Like that's that's the best I could. I equated it like that, right? Yeah. So when I start looking up crows, because I always was into like learning different names of animals, like a, a group of geese is a gaggle, like a, a group of owls is a parliament. You know what I mean? A yeah. group of crows is a murder. Stuff like that. Yeah. So I start researching it, and I'm like, yo, you know, it's a thing with crows when they have funerals. Like, they'll have funerals for niggas and shit. So I realized, oh, I was like a pallbearer. I was the grave digger for this crow funeral. <laughs> you understand? Got you, man. Now, a year and some change after that, me and my queen in the crib in the morning, I wake up. I hear all of these crows. It's just 
mad crows outside. Now, where I lived at at the time it was like a little courtyard. Gotcha. So when I go outside in the courtyard, I'm looking, I'm hearing, I'm seeing it. They swooping, they flying, they bugging. So I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe they just having a disagreement because crows will have disagreements with each other sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're really fascinating animals. They're very, very, very intelligent. And I think it's something to do with the hyper pigmentation of the melanin they got. But anyway, as I'm, I'm like, yo, what's going on? Right. Again, just screaming out to the animals. Hey, what's going on? It's not like they're going to talk to me. Right. I'm not expecting that. But. Hey, what's going on? They squawking, squawking. Look down. What is it? Another dead crow. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, shit. Did these niggas find out where I live? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, how did they know? He's dead now in the same type of situation. I'm like, yo, did these niggas find out where I live? And now they want me to help do this again? So whatever. I don't even take it no way. I just do what I did last time. And sure enough, I did it. Brought this crow to another side of the beach, whatever, did the same thing. When I looked up, same thing. Another same three crows. I don't know if the same three crows, but it was three crows. I was just there watching that shit. Three again, was, right? Yeah. So then I found out that crows, not only when you do good shit for them, do they not only remember they go and they tell other crows and other birds about you. <laughs> so if they see you, they all have the same energy of the one that told them whether you was good or bad. Mm -hmm. So again, I say all of this to say that all of these somewhat insignificant situations, these be the biggest events in your life. Like that was a major thing in my life. I'm thinking about it now. And it seemed very dang normal, but the way that it happened, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The way that it unfolded, the way I did the knowledge to it, it made it what it was, you mm -hmm. So some people might say, oh, that was just some dumb animals doing this, this, and that, but I don't believe in that. Yo, I agree with you. I don't make no fool on purpose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. And these crows, these animals got way more sense than us. Like I said, after this, this the cat died, Little more ID. When I looked at him again, he, he prostrated right in front of the Sekhmet mm -hmm. statue. Now, that ain't the only one I got over there. I got a Mami Wata statue. We got a couple of other ones. Uh, uh, Benedict the Moor. No. He go to the cat goddess. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Point, man. So, again, metaphysicalness, that's what I'm saying. When you put your mind to something spiritually, you'll get it. When I was first studying Hebrewism, I was broke. I had no money. And the girl that I was talking to at one point, it's just water, buddy. The girl I was talking to at one point lived on the other side of Brooklyn in Park Slope. So I would have to walk, for those people that know New York, I would walk from uh, Franklin Avenue over there by Eastern Parkway, all the way to Union Street and Prospect Park. What is that? Prospect Park West. So that walk would take at least an hour and a half, especially when I had no bike. Mm. But one day when I was researching the, the, the science, you know, I was really getting to Hebrewism. So I was looking for any books I could get on Hebrewism and stuff. It's water, buddy, just drink it. And I was walking one night. It was, may have been about two in the morning. I'm on my way to the shorty crib after, you know, being out for the day, doing whatever. Yeah. So as I'm walking there, I'm thinking about, you know, the Hebrew and how I need to learn it and this, this and that. Because, you know, I grew up in Crown Heights, so it's nothing but Ashkenazi and Jews around here. Mm -hmm. So they have it such that you think they the only Jews in the world, where really they're the last one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. They really are not any of that. But anyway, in walking, I happened to be passing a synagogue. And as I was thinking about what Hebrew books I should get or whatever, I looked to my right 
And on the synagogue steps is a stack of books. So then I'll go over to it and I'll look. And why is it a bunch of books on Hebrew? You know, um, there was one, there was a Hebrew Yiddish dictionary that was in it, which was crazy. Then there was another one that was written in all in like Yiddish type of Hebrew. Then they had other ones that was just like straight Hebrew shit. But it's like six, six of these books, you know what I'm saying? And I'm walking two in the morning. So how am I going to tell you? I can't leave them, but I don't feel like walking with them all the way there. So some got to give. So I sat down for a moment and was like, well, I ain't had no money for the train. I'm not going to hop because, you know, this is during the, this was like towards the end of the quality of life shit. So you hop the train. They want to put you in right this and shit. So mm -hmm. I was like, all right, what am I going to do? So I said, well, whatever. If I got to take them, I just got to take them. So I committed myself to walking the rest of the way with these books in my hand. So I picked the books up. I start walking. Right when I get to the corner, I hear, er, er, look over, it's my man Taekwon. But just. My man Taekwon just came we spiraled around the country. And he was like, yo, Chuck, where you going? They called me Chuck back then. Like, yo, Chuck, where you going? It's like, yo, what's up with the books and shit? I was like, yo, I just found these books. He said, well, where you, you, you walking with them shits? Like, nah, nigga, put that shit in the car, man. Let me take you, you understand? Yeah. And I was able to blow some herb on the way there. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like, Allah is so merciful that when you just, when you commit to saying, look, Allah, this is the only way I could get it. Okay, this is what I got to do. It open up because Allah is the highest self. It's the highest aspect of all that is wonderful, all that is right. Beautiful. So yeah, all you're saying that you know that's the uh, highest manifestation, man. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's the highest manifestation because we exist in heaven, earth, and hell. Because earth is already in the no realm. problems, nothing. <laughs> exactly. Me? <laughs> Me, nah. From day one, they mess with. Don't even take. I look at it like that's no it's correct because I'm like, oh shit, they'd have let it just rock. Yeah, man. but anything real substantial, they gotta shut that down. Yeah, so, so it's the same thing, like I said, with heaven, earth, and hell. When you, when you go ahead, I'm sorry. No, 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 hey. you know what I'm saying? I, I was only, uh, you know, I, Kuja told me, you know what, because we had Azaria, you know what I'm saying, and you know, uh, he dropped some heavy intels, you know what I'm saying, on the vaccine stuff, and Kuju told me this, you know what I'm saying? Be careful, because, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you might get struck, you know what I'm saying? We put that shit, and you already know, you know what I'm saying? You know? Uh, thing was sticking down. So, hey, bro, uh, quickly. Um, you might... I'm, I'm going to share it. Let me know if you can see it or not. So, that's... You see... See what I'm yeah. talking about, right? Okay, good. So I was just saying, bro. See what I'm I talking hope, about, right? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope okay. you can see that. So you did share this in one of your class, the May and Morris yes. interdimensional star map. So that's going to be my only topics before open up the Q and A. So, bro, please share because that's key, and I, for me, I really like this, and I never seen. A lot of people talk about that, you know. Okay, that is, that's what that's what the Kabbalists, the people who practice something they refer to as Kabbalah, which they refer to as Hebrew mysticism, which is home of all more So in that, that, was, that atom that we're talking about is that hydrogen slash carbon slash what you call an atom, right? That creates what we perceive as dark matter or dark energy, which we call on earth melanin. So every Sephiroth of the so-called tree of life that's on that document that is also connected to a so-called star system, you have to understand star systems are just universal. 
operating systems that exist in the high your consciousness. If the earth was hurtling at, through space at such a high velocity, why are all the astrological signs always in the same place? You ever think about that? That would be like getting into a car and as you are driving past you see staying the same. Has that ever happened to you? You hear about our ancestors to reorganize how we was going to that did not exist in the world into something. Because Kabbalah is another form of alchemy that teaches how to take something base and turn it into something better. Right. So what we see as trigonometry, this, this, that, all of that is algebra. Allah algebra or Allah Jeb Ra, right? Mm -hmm. Al meaning all, Jeb meaning earth, Ra or Bra or Bara, right? Which is like Baraka, which means breath, or Bra, which means sun. So algebra, Al Jeb Ra, right? Is speaking then of the universal aspect of Jeb representing the earth, right? Under the sun, which is then Ra, i.e. Bay, i.e. the higher self, i.e. Allah. So people with no direct history or line, lineage of what I'm talking about, they can only take a piece of this and turn and follow that. So we Moors, we can adapt and take, eat the whole meal. These people can't do it, so they got to take a piece of it. So they take a piece of it, a piece of the life that we call Islam, and they create a whole sect on, on Because Muslim mean muscle. Muslim mean ancient landowner or fife or, or uh, title holder. Muslim is a old school Algonquin word which is a dialect spoken by the original Moors of North Central and South, excuse me, of the Northeastern section of the United States, excuse me, of America. And, you know, the uh, Algonquian, you know what I'm saying, flag and how it was used later on with uh, Lebanon, you know what I'm saying? Yes, the cedar tree you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cedar tree of Lebanon that you see on their flag is the same cedar tree that you see on the flag of the Moors here in America. But today they call that the New England flag. But really that is the continental flag of the union between us and that. So that's again, another Moorish flag. That's you know, we used to see it, I used to see it a lot when I was a child, but after a certain time, they just deaded it. So you have Moors again, because of their lack of understanding history, they act like that's not their flag. They act like that belong to somebody else. So you got to let them do that because the cedar trees are the ancient giant trees. Those trees represent the giant trees that was here prior to the fall of creation. Yeah. The ones allegedly cut down by the angels that we now see as, as hills or mountains. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. So thank you, bro. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're going to pay homage. You didn't mention this last time. Bobby Emmett. Uh, brought you to the team, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we're gonna give him, you know, we're gonna send him some, you know, I'm saying some good vibration because, uh, the, you know, this brother, you know, what I'm saying, uh, influences his influences, man. Uh, it's unspeakable, you know, what I'm saying, thank you, bro. I yeah. appreciate that, man. Yeah, so thank you for thank this. You. Listen, we're gonna open up the QA, you know, what I'm saying, so I'm gonna keep track of the time. Uh, just unmute or put the, you know what I'm saying, click at the end, icon, you know what I'm saying, so that I know who's, who's online, you know what I'm saying, greet yourself to us here and share or ask your questions. Peace, Asir. Peace, everyone. Peace, brother. Peace, brother. Right. Good, 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 good. I had a question concerning the flags. Uh, you said that uh, Algolkan, I think, uh, and uh, Moors doesn't want to recognize them. Can you just elaborate a little bit on it? On the, the, the New England flag? 
Yes. When I was talking about the seed tree and stuff. Um, well, yeah, that flag was adopted by New England or was taken over by New England, the same way the Kingdom of Morocco, just like the Kingdom of Morocco um, adopted the Moorish flag of, of uh, yeah. go against. Yeah, sorry, bro, it's here. Uh, Yo. You know what I'm saying? The, the thing is still- Went out again? Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Let's go ahead, bro. Yeah, so he, um. They did that. They set that oh. up. The set that was then immediately ill. Do it again. Yeah, there you go. Was immediately ill enough. Then there was a separate joint where they was following C. Kirkman Bay, who was the agent working for J. Edgar Hoover, who was also known as Colonel Kirkman, who also plagiarized one of the last books written by Noble Joao called um, Brotherhood of the East, I believe is the book. He plagiarized and said he wrote and really took it from the prophet. And then outside of that, there was another faction, right? So it wasn't until the late 70s, early 80s, that we started to see a rise of, of other Moors starting to come in to bring more clarity to this that weren't necessarily via the temple, but were connected to people through the temple. That's how you started getting people like Taj Tariq Bay, uh, Jose Pimenta Bay, peace to him, one of the greatest elders. That's the one you see the prophets lying. You understand? Everything else is fake. So if you're in a temple and they got that 51 star flag up in there, the, the, the rulers or the, the people making the laws, the sheiks and them, they may not know. That's what I'm trying to say, too. I'm not trying to put nobody on blast and make them feel like, oh, because I got the 51 star flag flying in my temple. It's not legit. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, though, that there's a certain you don't want to just be right. You want to be right, exact and correct, if possible. So if I'm coming through and I'm showing and proving and you find something wrong with that, as if I'm trying to make you seem a certain way, then you're dealing with your ego. You're not dealing with the truth. Allah put in my heart to bring to you. Therefore, we're not dealing with equality. You see what I'm saying? We're dealing with some sort of uh, tyranny. And I didn't get into more science to for un I don't give a fuck what color he is. What his nationality or ideology is. I have was I as they say, was always meant to be free, just like you, just like all the rest of us. So if you find that people are using knowledge specifically to try to hoard over you or make you dependent on them, then you're dealing with some sort of Freemasonry bullshit and you should get away from it altogether because that's not more science. Peace. Thank you. Peace, bro. Thanks for the support, bro. All right. So anyone um wants to go, uh go ahead. So we got brother here, uh Marcus. Go ahead, bro. Hello, Mr. As brother As how are you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you, bro. Yeah, how are you doing? Brother. I'm well, brother. How you doing? I'm fine, I'm fine. My question is is regarding nationality. I heard you and um, Brother Toriano Abashango held on a second okay. talking about um, you guys are setting a place in Arkansas, I believe, at Polanski, I think. So you pro proceeding with the trust and um, you going international. Oh, I'm sorry, I froze. I, I, okay, it's froze. Um, it's regarding the nationality with Toriano L and the place Polanski, I think, and our Arkansas that you guys are sending okay. out. Yes. Well, the brother is out there, right? Yes. But uh, my friend and I are in the process to change our status and go into the, our nationality. And I would like to have some advice or guidance 
regarding that and uh, maybe i don't know if your process is different than uh, other process or IV, rv bay and everything so we are located in canada i don't know how it's gonna fend up or um in in canada or canaan land i know this is the grand sheik i know grand sheik kujo and the canaan land more so um when it comes to the national the process that I, I do to, again, I, I don't get to what else is doing today because when I came into the game and I didn't know what to do, no more news. You know, you go through the gamut trying to get to the root, the truth of it. Because sometimes these brothers that's kicking all of this, they just doing it based upon they grew up watching people like me for all of these years and then paraphrasing certain things that I do. And then we'll go and create whole lectures, a whole fake processes and packages just based on a lecture that I did or somebody like me did. Hold up. It may have issues. So it may have issues because it's coming from this website that's not necessarily established by somebody that did the process they self. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you have mores or people that will create fake processes just to get people to do it. Then you got the agents and these type of people. So what I do, like I said, is work with people individually based upon where and what their situation is. So in terms of what me or what the brother Toriano and I were talking about, that knew that material faction based on your blood and equity and all that. At the time, the only people talking about that was me and him. You know what I'm saying? At the time, like, nobody, like, there was so much stuff that I was finding out that I was like, somebody got to know this. And if they know it and they're not saying it, then that means they're concealing it. And if they're concealing it, then that means that they're not morals in the first place. You dig? They working with the ops. So... My main thing is, again, everybody's individual place. You can hit me up at House of L at Hotmail.com. And then also keep in, keep, keep in mind that even though you are in the Americas, you're still in a different corporate jurisdiction. So what may pop off out here a certain way may not translate the same way. You got to do stuff a certain way out there. You know what I mean? But there is a definite... I can't speak to anybody else's processes because I'm the one that people call when they processes that they do with these other people get messed up. I'm the guy that people hit up to kind of help fix all of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I was out here prior to them doing all of that. You see what I'm saying? But I don't offer a quick fix. I don't offer some, some illusion that when you become a more like all your problems in the United States or Canada, wherever that is, is done. Like you just automatically don't have to do shit. Like I didn't, you understand? That's not what it's about. You shouldn't get into this. So you don't have to do certain things. <laughs> you understand? Cause that means you, your intent is off. If anything, you would want to do something like this to be as free as possible to have as much Liberty over yourself as possible to own more of yourself as possible, to have a direct line between you and the creator as possible without some middleman or some fake religion that your ancestors set up for these fake niggas to deal with. That's right. And Bruce here, you mentioned uh, his appellation. So uh, Brother Kujo L is mm -hmm. he's online. You know what I'm saying? Just so ah, Islam. Islam to the Grand Sheikh, man. Thanks for holding me down. I've been peace for a long time. And he's one of the few people to openly bang on people. <laughs> yeah, so you know what I'm saying? So that's a shout out and, you know, you know, I'm saying a shout out, especially from, you know, I'm saying Brother Usir, you know, I'm saying to Brother Kujo, you know, I'm saying so. Um, Islam, Islam, give thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. You already know how they be hating. <laughs> They've been hating all day. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like you mentioned, man, 
you you talk about you know you expose the sellouts everybody's crying you uh, unite but kwami <laughs> you know i'm saying spoke about you know the sellouts in the uh sport business and everybody's you know i'm saying is supporting him so you know i'm saying uh eventually uh not eventually but you know most definitely you know i'm saying the work that you're doing is you know i'm saying that's the most uh most impacted man so thank you bro thank you yo and then peace to, to the duke whenever he gets back on Honest yeah to the duke. exactly so brother marcus so technically you know from what the zero stating uh it's to get in connection with their sense sincere ones you know what i'm saying yeah uh bro so in, Ooh, the, me I... in the meantime yeah. in the meantime that asir uh will be back kujo would you could you go you know i'm saying quickly on nationality to brother marcus he's in montreal yeah, please. please all right um well for what Uh, like like um the more was saying there's all these different ways of right um but depending on where it is that you're coming from as far as your your national descent you might already have a nationality and all you're doing is correcting your status not necessarily proclaiming your nationality so for example somebody who's um from the continent let's say more than likely they have a nationality already somebody from asia more than likely they have a nationality so what you're doing is you're going to be making the transition from from the all capital letters name to a free name that has bay on it right so with um with us what we do is we do a name correction which corrects the name and then you do a judicial proclamation. And once you do the name correction and the judicial proclamation, then you would um um apply for your for your identification to match to match that. <laughs> right? Um and again, the like, like brother Ursi was saying, this is not for for you to get out of something or you got something going on and you're you know this is more a mindset a mindset right. thing correcting your mind thing that's not, right not really correcting the paper thing but um right. just um just get my number from from brother AGL Islam and um and give me a shout since the duke's back Islam duke Islam great one and thanks for holding it up though it's love to the empress and the fam appreciate the looking, bro. appreciate you know your work for all your work yo thank you very much brother shukran brother we all we got Islam. man That's you know, we all we got. <laughs> That's real, God. Right now. We're, especially now, we're all we got for especially real. Especially now, God, we all we got. So any Moors is doing the right thing. As the prophet said, he said, the one thing surprised me is when I see a Moor do right. Do right. So any doing right, <laughs> you got to give respect, man. So again, thanks you for always yeah. keeping it real and letting, yeah. letting the people know what this is and that we all just not be active, we not passive. And the fact that Just because we moles and we practice love, truth, peace, for inequality, justice and quality don't mean that we don't have the scimitar and all of that too, you know? So it's definitely, we need that. So thank you, brother. Thank you, bro. So, you know, while you were connecting. Oh, go ahead, Kujo. Go ahead, Kujo. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say I yield the floor just so you could get back to your to your Islam. Session. Give thanks. Islam. Islam. So to the people out there, you know what I'm saying? That, that's just another evidence and proof. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, real more is that do the work, you know what I'm saying? And despite the aiding, despite, you know what I'm saying? Uh, cutting the corner, uh, despite the people, you know what I'm saying? Or hating or the ones that cutting the corners speak, mm -hmm. you know, bad mm -hmm. against, you know, Osir or Kujo. Mm -hmm. you know, just to let you know that their work is significant. And it's sincere. Shukran, brother. Yeah. Shukran, brother. Because like I said, when 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 they'll take the message how they want, because our people be fickle. But like, for instance, when Shaharazad Ali was out here, when Jewel Pukram was out here, when when Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, bless the dead, was out here, she was telling females how they need to get right, how they need to get back when they man and get 
come back in order. Everybody tried to ignore him, right? We want to follow more with Beyonce, single ladies and all this other crap, right? Now here come this, this dude, come out and just got the whole world taken by storm. This dude on the internet where the black women call in and he basically run through them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I forget the dude's name. The Somebody Kevin. Kevin right. Yes. Thank you. On the tip of my tongue. Yes, him. And look, he basically saying the same thing that the sister was saying. The same thing, bro. And she was giving it to the sisters in love because this is a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother. You understand what I'm saying? A Muslim, a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Who have praised for Allah, who give all respect and glory to Allah. And that's the problem. They only want to accept it from an Angela Bass, somebody that's Christian, you see, somebody that's Prince Hall, Sigma Phi, Ro, and all that shit, influence, and that's what's killing the black community. And instead of our people doing acknowledge to that, what we doing? We they trying to find, they trying to find any type of dirt on this nigga as possible. You understand? But he ain't doing nothing that the other one, Tommy Sotomayor, and the other one was doing. You know what I'm saying? But the problem, like I said, is niggas want to pick and choose the message. They want to pick and choose the messenger. We want to be able to get the knowledge and all that, but we want to be able to assimilate it how we want to assimilate it. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to know why you got the info to say this, this, and that. But these same motherfuckers sit there and watch Dr. Phil all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These yeah. same niggas watching the Ayan LeVan saying all day, who used to come out and try to diss Shaharazad Ali. Mm -hmm. And now look at her. Now look at her. She now echoing the same shit. And keep it real with you. Keep it real with you on her. She wrote a book. And in the book, she talked about how she was with this dude in the projects one time and knew he had a girl, but she was doing her own thing. And she wound up, the girl wound up coming home early. And, and the dude wound up being like, whatever. He ain't trying to lose his girl. Grab up all her clothes and threw her out the window. Mm -hmm. Right, had to go out the project window. That was my pops. <laughs> For real, real talk, son. That was my father. That was my father on his pimp shit and whatever back then. Wow. And I say that to say the the woman that he wasn't trying to leave was my mother. <laughs> you understand? This is how deep we be involved in the game and don't even know. This is shit I found out about right before he died, bless the dead. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is stop hating on the messenger, man. Let's start respecting one another. Let's put the original woman back where she's supposed to be. And all of these boule, Sigma Phi role, black skull and bones chicks, because that's who's really running it right now, if y'all ain't know. The Sigma Phi role and the, the what you call it, the OTO Scottish right, white men. Because Sigma Phi Rho was set up to be basically the female, black female skull and bones. Also, um, Sandra Bland was Sigma Phi Rho. And you see what they did to her when she started waking up. If that was even a real occurrence. Because, you know, they made a video about it. They had a Netflix movie and shit. So whenever they get like that, mm -hmm. that's the other thing. Netflix was started by Sigmund Freud's great, great grandson. Sigmund Freud was a Fraud was a voracious pedophile who was inbred mm. and was marrying into his sister and everybody in their family went crazy. And this is the nigga that they established the whole psychological evidence from. Another one of his protégés was a dude named Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays is the father of feminism. This is the nigga that created feminism as a military operation to inject into the black community to get black women to give up their families to move more into becoming white women into their families. And we are seeing the full effects of that right now. So anybody yeah. down with that type of shit, anybody not talking about nationality, birthright, inheritance, the divinity that lies within and without, and the, the uh, uh, establishment of your posterity, your legacy, your dynasty, these niggas is your enemy. That's the ops. They trying to set you up, get you caught lacking, so that way they could put you in a pack, <laughs> start smoking you up, 
and then giving you all your respect once you're dead. That's okay? It. That's no. It. So, again, man, we all we got. And I'm not out here to beef with other Moors or other so-called people. If you see niggas got problems with me, most of these people that got a problem with me don't even know me, have never spoken to me, and have low-key grown up, because I've been doing this for 20 plus years. I'm 48. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. So 10 chances to one. If I can give respect to people who came before me, like Hakeem Bay, Jose Pimenta Bay, Queen Valaria, uh, Bobby L, Bobby Hammett, C. Freeman L, like why they can't do that for people like me? You see what I'm saying? We supposed to give each other our flowers while we here. I give respect to Brother Torian. I give respect to Brother Cucho. I give respect to any other Moors out here trying to do their thing. Respect to you. Any show that would have me on. Because mm -hmm. I don't be out here soliciting for it. And I'm not going to extend myself to the point that I was doing so those years ago when niggas in the conscious community was trying to get rid of me, trying to poison my queen. We wound up losing a baby. It's like, and talking shit and see what I'm saying it's really whack yo it's really whack but again I'm not here to dry snitch on nobody and I'm not here to go over stuff that already happened you know what I mean the point is it ain't work so when they can't get you and they can't bribe you and they can't think what they do they try to black boy yeah see but again, my faith was never in the so-called pundits and the so-called peers in the community. My faith was always in the people. Because that's where all the power is. That's where all of the love is. That's where all of the ancient ancestral knowledge is. That's so right. long as the people will allow themselves to practice love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and equality, and not just be on to this voracious appetite of destruction that we all seem to be down with because we don't like what this nigga saying, or I'm more into his version than her version and all of this and that. And we all under the same, we all on the same damn slave colony. <laughs> that's right. You know what I'm saying? Yep, that's right. So, so we have a seer, man. We, <laughs> we're gonna let, you know, two questions because we're running to our time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, this would be like our last one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two, so I could flash. Yeah, so uh, I know there's brother Sheldon, L from Islam, brother Sheldon. Nevada, you know what I'm saying? So Islam, Islam Noble too. was good. Great one, Noble. How you doing, man? Great to hear from you again. Everything's good. All right. I see you shining, good. brother. Yeah. What's going on, Lord? Great, Islam. Man. Can't thank you enough. I always thank you every time I see you, man. Every time Islam, I see you. Noble. Thank you bro. Thanks for that email the other day, too, man. That was really dope. I appreciate that. Always, bro. Always. Always, always. Good to yeah, see man. You, I just want to say, like, if anybody doesn't know, Asir is the one that opened up my eyes to what I was walking past every single day for like 11 years. And, and <laughs> it's long. Like, crazy. It's and, long, brother. Uh, and it was back in 2011 when I just started, when things weren't going well. So I was looking for spiritual uh, guidance. And I just came across his video and he, he said, he said two things that just got me thinking like, okay, I got to listen to this dude. He said, if God made the original man in his likeness and we're the original people on the planet, what does that say about them? So he said that, and I was like, and then he said, if the sun is the giver of life on the planet and it gives us energy and it kills them, what does that say about us? Exactly. And when he said just those no. two things, those two things were so much common sense. I'm like, okay, that's it. That's deep. <laughs> that's it. Islam. Islam, and brother. Just, yeah, and then I just hit him up, and then he, he told me, you're in Bavaria? He said, the Moorish, Moorish uh, influence is huge here. Just walk around and see what you see. And I was mm -hmm. walking past the Moors Pharmacy every single day, going to every the Every day. And that should have been there since noticed. the 1600s, right? Yeah. No, since the 1400s. Since the 1400s, right? Since 1441, exactly. bro. And exactly, exactly and bro. There's a plaque. There's a plaque on it that lists all the owners from 1441 all the way down to 2000, 2008. Wow. It's like the owner since 2008. Wow. Yeah. So again, man, we're gonna get our bread up and we're gonna buy it. 
Let's do that. We'll be the next owners. And then it's really going to be a wrap because now it's going to go yeah. right back to the beginning because you yeah. look like the dude in the logo. Yeah. I know they was bugging when you walked <laughs> like that. Like, oh, no, shit. that bugged me out. And then yeah. once, once, once I saw that, then I was like, okay, well, let me go to Regensburg. And then there's one in Regensburg. Okay, let me go to Munich. Yeah. One in Munich. Then I, just yeah. all the, just, just the area. But um, uh, uh, I went to Bamberg. There was one there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. more. And then look and look how the future go. Now, like I said, with the common sense quickies y'all be doing, mm. that shit automatically just deads. That that reminds me of the old schoolhouse rock shit I used to watch. Because in seeing that, when these when these dudes jump off the ledge and try to go crazy with their little hating on the prophet, hating on the moors, hating on whatever, whatever. When people send me that, I'll send them that. I'll be like, nah, go check the common sense quickies. That shit will already dead uh -huh. all of that. And then look what has happened. And look what has happened. The same dude, whole channel shut down. You see that? You know that, right? Whose channel? Your boy. <laughs> the young one. The young one. I don't one. even like saying these niggas' names. Oh. The one that was about to speak at CPAC and all that. Wait, I'm tripping. Who is this? You did the comment. Yeah. Huh? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Young yeah, that Fury. Guy, that guy Young whole Fury. page shut down. Young Gone. Fury. Oh, yep. really? Your man Marshall. Yeah, that whole shit is done. Marshall. Okay. <laughs> so shut after, down the entire page, bro. So after that video I did with, with, with him and Seti and all that, you mean that one? Yeah. I mean, maybe like wow. a month or something after that. His whole wow. page gone. <laughs> wow. That shit gone, bro. I told you, anybody that come out speaking negative against the prophet and is really on some, oh, you getting paid to do that? They yeah. out of here. Everybody that has ever spoke negative about him, I've watched in community. They days be numbered. They out. He going. What you call it was talking that crap about him? He wound up in jail. What you call it was talking crap about the prophet? What's his name? Found him coked out, sleep in the bus station, right? All these <laughs> niggas done. <laughs> They all done, man. They all done. You can't speak against the fault. You can't speak against that which is coming yeah. to uplift fallen humanity. And I don't right. just mean him as the prophet. I just mean him as an idea that has inspired generations of us to get our shit together. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like nobody ever left me nothing but him. If I think of leaders outside of ideology. And mm -hmm. what I could pattern myself after, they wasn't the best decision makers at the end. And we can't say that about him because he was ultim ultimately betrayed. Yeah. But all the rest of these niggas, they participated in their destruction. But I can't say that the rest of us can say anything because out of the end, what did Malcolm leave y'all? Movies, right? <laughs> what did what did what's name leave? Garvey Lee. Like everybody left speaking, talking. Mm -hmm. But here go the man, he done left us the flag, the nationality, the birthright, the inheritance, the estate, the geographic landmass, the geodetic survey. You know what I mean? He inspired people like yourselves, me, Prince Uriel Bay, the Veridis, the rest of these people. You know what I mean? People who most of our people, if they was to know and find out about, they would be like, well, damn, how come nobody? Because they all been selling us out. So the fact that we still here, we're in our right mind, we still have faith in our law, we still have faith in each other, says more than any of these niggas could put out. Because all they put out is hate. You understand? Yeah. And they hate what they can't love. And they can't love because that's been stolen from them. Because all of these guys have come from abusive relationships, abusive homes. They put themselves in humiliation, submission rituals. You understand? They don't believe that they're worthy enough to get some sort of redemption. So you can't expect us to look at these niggas like they actually care and have love for us when they don't even can't even love themselves because of the choices that they made. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to forgive them for they know not what they do, even though they know. All we can do is know. be the example. Even though, know. even though they know, we got to be the example to show that, again, man, you want to get right, you got to be right. Because when a person know better, they do better. If you know the knowledge and then you just go around and you just acting like you don't know to get money, then that means you are the problem. You're the white man. You're the agent. You're the op. 
Because you don't have no plan. You just want to keep this thing going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brother, I'm here. It's on, bro. Uh, so, Sheldon, yo, peace to you, man. In, peace in to you, brother. brother. Uh, peace, bro, peace, peace we do man. one more. When we, yeah, so, uh, please, I'm here. There's Featherhead more. That's the last one. So, Featherhead okay. more. Uh, please, you know what I'm saying? Peace. Peace. And talk with your Siri. You got your you're in mute, bro. Islam, Islam. Islam, brother. How you doing? Brother Sir, man. Yeah. Peace, brother. How are you? Fire from day one, you know. Islam, brother. Thank you for the support, man. I appreciate it. And um Kujo as well, man. But you know, you, you've been doing it for like what 25 years and stuff. 30 About. years. It seemed like it. It seemed longer, but you know, <laughs> Allah yeah. give to those what he can, you know? I just thank and praise. Thanks for the support, brother. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, man. And you should be doing more music too. You're right. You're right, bro. Yeah. I've been really um working on some stuff with that because uh, I'm striving to get more back in its creative side of what I'm used to you know what i've been doing so i'm finishing up um a colored version of the dark school 14 the comic book novel i did and uh i'm coming out with this prequel to that but i'm doing a soundtrack for both so it'll be like you'll be able to watch listen to the joint and then because one of the characters in the book is actually make music you would basically be listening to what this character would make in music like if it was real. So this way it's like a, a soundtrack to the books. You know what I mean? Like what I did the first one. Make it more interactive and then inshallah working on a, a animated version of it. Excuse me, an animated version of it. So we can um so we can start attacking them on that level too. You know what I'm saying? I was just about to say that that needs to be a cartoon, bro. Yeah, bro, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm speaking to this yeah. brother out in Japan about um, really going ham on that. Mm-hmm. And then getting people like yourself, you know what I mean? You, mm-hmm. the brother, of the cool Joe, some other people I know to actually do voices. Mm-hmm. So now we're employing Moors to play Moors in Moorish back, Moorish productions. You see what I'm saying? soundtrack by more so you dig what i'm saying so now we just keeping all of the money like that's my whole thing keeping the bread and then using this to funnel into the the dominions of each of our territories so this way now we can practice group to group economics free trade agreements and all of that trust to trust banking this the type of stuff that they've been keeping from us because they make it seem like you got to join up with them to know how to do it when really you already up there so as a more from Canaan land, as a more down here in Almada Commons of Stados, we can create a free trade agreement that says every month I'm supposed to send this to you and you're supposed to send this to me. And in that, we pay for it via our trusts. And then from there, we expand it to anybody else that comes into that network. And now look what happened. Now we basically self-sufficient and we're our own bank. And we're funding our own endeavors because we're not doing it in our name as U.S. citizens. We're taking our trust and estates from whatever country we in and pledging those, you see, to basically reestablish what we supposed to have already done. As opposed to these niggas that get money by being sponsored by Apple or this one or that one and Neutrogena and shit. And now they are the ones that's getting us to pump poison into our veins because of their paycheck like that's what we dealing with i'm dead like we dead on that which means that we're the only humans left <laughs> the only humans left will be the humans that are not taking that that thing you understand so according to the bible if we follow in the ritual the bible says that the land of the father will be cleaved from the land of the devil and at the land of the devil will be over here. We'll be over here. So obviously, if they got to go with the ritual, that part got to happen too, right? <laughs> so let's make it happen is what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. So yes. thank you, brother. Yes. 
Yeah, I seen your last um class. Uh, I forgot the, I forgot with who. Mm -hmm. but yeah, you about aneurysms and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, brother. And and yeah, you know what happened? Like four months ago, I, I got an aneurysm. Wow. I got a and stuff. Yeah. Wow. And you still here? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, God? Obviously, you know, you know why I'm here still. So. <laughs> Allah is, the greatest. Allah is the greatest Allah. bless you, brother. I'm glad that wow, right after we spoke about the animus thing, too, right? That's crazy. Because uh, that's how my queen's mother passed. They hit her, they hit her with the uop in church. And she died, literally blessed the dead, sitting up in church, straight dead. <laughs> hit her with the yeah. annual. So the fact, yeah, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if 50, 100 years later they're talking about. Some sonar weapon that they used to use. You no, know, they was using. They got it now. They talking about yeah. it now. They got the yeah, heart attack. Yeah, they got it now. They yeah. got it now. They got the heart attack gun. They got all of that. Did you, you know, <laughs> you know when it, it happened to me when I was getting a package using my national ID card. Wow. That's, that's when it. And Where was I, you at? You was in the post office. Yeah, I was in the post office. Wow. <laughs> just, yeah, the whole thing is weird. <laughs> wow, you wildin'. Wow, they are really funny, bro. They really funny. I felt really uh, funny, I bro. the whole way until I pulled my nationality card out. I say, yo, this time I made my mind up, yo, I'm not leaving until I get my package. You know, and then next mm -hmm. thing you know, I'm on the floor, vomit, everything on my phone and stuff. And um my nationality card on my lap. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then what? You just woke up and then you was good? <laughs> I, 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 called, I called a couple more and somehow um, I was ended up passing out again. And then I was in the back of the ambulance. Then the ambulance guy saying that um, I, I basically I wanted to leave because I thought it was nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I'm all right. Maybe I had a headache or somebody hit me or something. Cause my back, my back was um like. Did you smell anything before you passed out? Like toast or mm -mm. anything? Mm -mm. And it wasn't even a, a hard headache, you know. It was just like, yo, know, this guy. I, I just made my mind up. Like, had I'm, you I'm been there before trying to get something and they was fronting on you? No, but that was right beside the temple where 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 Moors always go to get packages and stuff. Got you. Uh, and then there's some new guy out of nowhere saying that he, he'd never seen that car before and he's showing me a whole bunch of corporate IDs and stuff saying that they only accept this kind of, you know, 501c3 Indians tax exempt stuff, you know? Whatever. Whatever, bro. They be lying. But I'm yeah. glad you are right, man. For real. Because that's that's definitely something. And I've, I've been hit with shit like that before and fainted. Like, that shit is not cool. So I'm glad you're good, bro. <laughs> That's Islam. great. Islam, brother. Islam. The world better with you in it, man. Yeah. So again, stay thing. And what you could start to do, man, um, sleep with like a bowl of water under your bed. That works. That helps consolidate brain waves at night when you're sleeping and shit. Thank you, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the for the more help. Yeah. So hey, Islam. we're coming to an end. Yeah, Islam. So we're coming to an end. Mm -hmm. Um, was a great session, man. Cause uh, you know, what I'm saying that's a lot of people talking about where well, yo, where's the unity and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a show. So we had today, May 25th, on the Galatic Talk. You know, what I'm saying our chef here and dearest brother, a seer the mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying you can reach him out on Asovel um at hotmail.com you yep. know and, and every sunday he has you know his class and mm -hmm. you know you get to you go on this channel you'll be mm -hmm. able to show you see you know i'm saying the classes so bro and uh, people you know i'm saying let's uh you know rum uh, you know rum uh, okay applause to us here and thank you thank bro. you guys man Thank you. Please check out www.cordobaorganics.com. Also check out www.acerdejugatiers.com. 
as well as uh, www.gumroad.com, G-U-M-R-O-A-D, and type in Asir Jugatiers in the chat. You can hit me up on Facebook under Asir Ali Cordoba. You can also hit me up at um, on YouTube under Asir Jugatiers. If anybody wanted to leave a donation or anything, I'll definitely love that. You could do so via Cash App to Money Sign, capital D, capital S, 418. Again, I try not to, I don't have no Patreon or none of that other type of stuff. So I'll try not to be soliciting like that. But, you know, every little bit helps and it helps get more books and stuff like that. So if anybody wants to support that way, I appreciate it. And like I said, man, anybody want to holler at me, hit me up at House of L at Hotmail.com. And uh, we could definitely um, consult or build or whatever we need to do. But again, respect to Kane and Land Moors, respect to um, uh, Moore Science Temple of America, Temple Number 8, respect to all of the Moore Science Temples of America, respect to all of the divine and national movements that are, that came out of the Moore Science Temple of America that actually are striving to help people, you know, big up to all the sheikhesses. We always talk about the sheikhs, but let's understand that this is a two clan Mawaii with the eels and bases at the top. But in that, we still, men and women is still at the top. So when we speak of the royal we, we speaking of the royal us, which again is the man and the female and the child, because that's our law. And again, Islam is, in my opinion, is the culmination of inshallah, subhanallah, la ilaha illallah, illallah, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Because all of that together are the different pinnacles and the, and the pillars that we need to practice in terms of love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, and equality. And again, we all we got. So respect to the ancestors, respect to the ancestors and some of the people I spoke to or spoke of today. Thank you again, brother, for having me on. Um, respect to uh, Sister Val that we passed. Respect to um, Princess Mysteria, the little cat that just passed. <laughs> and anybody that's lost a loved one in any type, man, like just know that they're gonna be in a better situation and we can make our situation better by preparing and not falling victim to all of the trash that these people want us to believe about ourselves. So peace, my brother. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. And you know what I'm saying? On behalf of the people, and yo quiero como agradecer también. Ah, gracias. It's Cordoba, you know what I'm saying? So big shout yes. out to the Empress Cordoba. So gracias, you too. Thank you, bro. So then again, love, brother. The Book of Tears. Islam, Islam. Thank you, man. That's my son. <laughs> That's more. more saying peace. <laughs> you always kind of get a little shine. So peace, everyone. It's long. Yeah. The deaf won't hear the blind won't see. They hear the message in the words of Drew Ali. The deaf won't hear the blind won't see. They hear the message in the words of Drew Ali. The deaf won't hear the blind won't see. They hear the message in the words of Drew Ali.